and inspiring their taste for adventure. Now, the gang are making a comeback. The author, Pamela Bouchard, uh, dubbed the new Enid Blyton, which is quite some some title to live up to, joins us now. Morning. So good to see you on the programme. Thank you very much for coming in. And what a dress. What a dress. Thank you. I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, let's give us an idea. In terms of your um, Blyton history, you were a, a, a great reader of Ian Blyton growing up. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I was a, a massive fan, um, which, interestingly, when Ian Blyton Entertainment asked me to write two new books for the season uh, series, they didn't realise how big a fan I'd been as a child. So that was a, that was a great bonus. Does it make it easier or more difficult, the fact that you're a huge fan? That's a good question. <laughs> I was so excited when I was asked, like, yeah. really so excited. And I think it was after a couple of days, the fear, the fear kind of set in. <laughs> it's a big responsibility to continue this iconic series. Um, it feels especially important to me because I was such a huge fan. And it's mm. the very first series of books that I read by myself, which makes them so special. Uh, but everybody's going to have an opinion about should we do this, should you continue, should you leave it where it is. Um, so what I was really pleased about was not that I'd been asked to rewrite anything, but I'd mm. been asked to write two new Secret Seven stories. So it was great. I got to go out in my shed, which is where, where I've written the books, my own Secret Seven shed. I always wanted one when I was wee. It took until the age of 35, but I got one. Well done. And uh, that's where I wrote the, uh, the two new books and got to revisit and spend time with these seven amazing characters. So what did you have to keep the same? Um, and what, what were you allowed to sort of bring your own sort of creativity to? Did they say you have to set them in the same time period? Well, um, the, the, the lady in charge, the big boss, Ina Blight and Alex, she was lovely and she said that she would quite like me to kind of put my own spin in it, see what I think. And I was really keen to keep it in the same time period mm -hmm. um, and to keep everything the same, the same characters, the same setting. Um, but two things I wanted to do. One was I wanted to um, change the language a little bit so that the kids and the way they communicate with one another, it sounded more like the way children would talk today. And also I wanted to inject a little bit more girl power. Right. Uh, <laughs> did you notice rereading them that perhaps the girl power had not been so strong? I did. Uh, obviously it's reflective of the of the time in which it was written. And Ina Blyton was, um, in her other series, The Famous Five, of course, yeah. the character George, she was proper girl power. Mm. Uh, but I just wanted to see that a bit more in Secret Seven, specifically with the characters Pam and Barbara, if you remember. They were always kind of in the background, literally in the shed, giggling. And I thought, no, no, we can't have... We can't have are this. they out in the shed now? Oh, yes. They're, I thought, what can you do? Because well, I don't want to change the characters too much. Mm -hmm. I decided that instead of being giggly girls, they were going to be wild. Uh, and weird and wonderful. So in one of the very first scenes in the first uh, book that I've written, they appear to an official Secret Seven meeting um, with their badges and password, but also dressed completely as witches for no reason whatsoever, um, just to be different. But they're actually now at the forefront solving the mysteries and giving Peter, bossy Peter, a run for his money. And this is called, <laughs> the, the, this one we're talking about today is Mystery of the Theatre Ghost. Yes. Okay, so what sort of research do you do for this? <laughs> it's a funny story, actually, this one. Um, I was on a train down to London and to Brighton with my then 10 week old baby. This was last year, and we got stuck for the beast from the east on the train for 10 hours. So I had a lot of time. 10 hours with the baby? 10 hours. Baby's wow. it was fine, he's breastfed, and the train fine. was warm, had everything that we needed. But uh, still, but yeah, <laughs> it's still stressy. I might, might, you have my, my thoughts, go on. You didn't write the book in 10 hours on the train, did No, you? but it gave, me the, it gave me the idea for my uh, series of books that I do with my amazing publisher, Nosy Crow. Yeah. Um, the, those books were the reasons that Ina Blyton got, uh, Ina Blyton Entertainment got in touch with me. That's about four characters in a primary school who solve all these mysteries. Um, and it gave me the idea for the new book there. There's a Yeti in the playground, because everybody kept on saying, the beast from the east is coming, the beast from right. the east. And I turned to my husband and said, see if I was eight years old, I think there was an actual Yeti on its way here. But we arrived in Brighton at the theatre and it was bustling and wonderful. Yeah. Then everyone left, I went back in, it was silent because I left my handbag and the theatre had completely changed in a, in a heartbeat. It went from being this place full of life to being eerie and quiet and that's where the mystery of the theatre theater ghost was uh, born. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I'm looking back at Enid Blyton because some people um, were, I, I mean, I loved Enid Blyton and I read ferociously read them, but some people were a little bit kind of sniffy about the way she wrote, weren't they? They were. Um, she, I think one of the best things about Ina Blyton was that she wrote four children. Um, she herself often said, which I've now adopted, that she didn't care about the views of anyone mm. over the age of 12. Mm -hmm. um, she wrote in a very accessible way and people, some people thought it wasn't challenging enough and it didn't include difficult words and it didn't teach children anything. But what she did was foster an amazing love of reading for pleasure, which is, it, which is, I think, the most important thing that we can do for, for children. Um, and my books, my Izzy series of books um, that I write, 
uh, are very much the same in a sense that I write for children. It's fast paced, it's straight to the point. Um, and that's what I've tried to do with Secret Seven. So in Secret Seven, there are no mobile phones? No. Nope. Nothing like that? Nothing like that. We're not having anything like that. We're just having these characters uh, come back for a, a meeting that they've not had for a long, long time. And, and is there still a dog? Themselves. There is still a dog. Scamper the dog. Can't get rid of the dog. No, Scamper's still there and he's still very much involved and there's always a biscuit for him. At the oh, end of the I love the idea you didn't care why I don't sleep. Actually, we thought it was quite good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our Pamela's new book is called Secret 7, Mystery of the Theatre Ghost. Uh, that is it from us today. Thank you so much for watching.